somebody all good? Amen. That is set up by prayer based upon a promise that follows affliction. Say it again. Hear the moves of Psalm 116. Each move is set up leading to God's goodness. That is set up by prayer based upon a promise that follows affliction. Say it again. The first move is I resolve to pray. The second move is I resolve to praise. The third and final move is I resolve to praise. So each move leads to God's goodness that is set up by prayer based upon a promise that follows affliction. But before you start the transition, like the psalmist, you have to resolve to give God the praise. So point number one, and the only point for this entire psalm is what? Force yourself to praise. That's the point. Mark it in your notes. Force yourself to praise. I'll explain it. When you force yourself to praise, you are determining, Arion, before the affliction that praise will change your position. In short, praise picks you up again. In short, praise not only picks you up, but it repositions you back into the wheel of God. Conclusively, the affliction has the power to steal your gratitude. Thus, you have to grab your gratitude from the affliction so you can give it back to God. You remember earlier in the sermon presentation, I said to you that something has a hold of your gratitude. And I submit to you now that it's the affliction told you an affliction is when you start weakening when you start weakening and when you start weakening you're susceptible to a knock out and a knock down by theological definition scriptural definition a affliction is when you get knocked down I told you last Sunday listen our problem in the room is nobody wants to go down but if you make the choice to let yourself go down then somebody call them You'll see the power of God to get back up again. It's a mindset. When you know God despite what you have to go through, you don't allow the process to paralyze your praise. So that means that nothing will handicap or handcuff my praise. I don't care what I'm going through. Nothing will paralyze my praise. I don't care the storm or the vicissitudes or vacillations of life. Nothing is going to paralyze my praise. Car broke down. I'm still going to praise them. Tires are ball on the car. I'm still going to praise them. No gas in the pinto. I'm still going to praise them. Bus fare ran low. I'm still going to praise them. Crackers and sardines in the refrigerator. I'm still going to praise them. I'm losing my home. I'm still going to praise them. Body wrapped with pain. I'm still going to praise them. Mine is in anguish. I'm still going to praise them. Nothing is working good for me, but I'm still going to praise them because I want God more than I want rubies, sapphire, diamonds, and things of the world because you can't worship two masters. You've got to love one or hate the other. When you get my age, you'll discover big things, Ferraris, Maseratis, mansions, and Rolls Royces, they come and they go, but the word of God, it stands forevermore. And so you've got to decide whose side you are on. Are you on the car dealer's side? Or are you on the banker's side? Or are you on the Lord's side? Because when you serve the Lord and delight yourself in the Lord, He'll give you the desires of your heart. I'm not arguing against riches and things of the world, but you better keep it in perspective. God don't mind you pushing a drop top porch. God doesn't mind you living in a mansion in Thomas Verde. But if God comes a calling with that mansion, you better open the gates and let some homeless folk live in your room. God's not really tripping on whether or not you're driving your porch, but God says if I open a side door, you better let somebody in who needs a ride. God says I love it when my people are doing well, because if my people are doing well. It's a reflection on the one that helped me do well. And the one that helped me do well is the wellness and the power of God. God is the giver of giver of every good and perfect 
again. Isn't God now the one that I should worship? Isn't God now the one I should praise? And so that's why I open my mouth and say, thank you, Lord. I'm grabbing gratitude. Thank you, Lord. I'm grabbing my praise. Thank you, Lord, because you are deserving. Somebody holler, praise the Lord. And something in you, which is gratitude, wants to come out, but gratitude can't come out because you locked yourself next to that problem. Talk to me now. In the mindset of captivity, in other words now, what's keeping them connected to hell was in their mind. Go slow. The word distress, distress, it means stretched apart and sorrow based upon losing something. Notice the psalmist says, I find, meaning this is what I see. Instead of gratitude, I see bad. Instead of praise, I see complaining. So watch this now. When I am in captivity, I'm stressing in my mind. And distress means I'm stretched apart. And so when I'm in the affliction, it pulls me out of church. When I'm in the affliction, it pulls me away from worship. When I'm in affliction, it pulls me away from the word. It pulls me away from worship. It pulls me away from the people. It pulls me away from the people of God. It pulls me away from the power of God. It pulls me away from the presence of God. It pulls me away from the power of God. It pulls me away from the provisions of God. Yes, see how far I've gotten away from my nose and the podium because of distress. Distress means I'm stretching apart. I'm further and further away from God because of the hell that I'm going through. But I came to preach today. No matter the hell Stay close to God and stay connected to God because it's in the presence of God you find power to deal with your problems. Yes. I call on the name of Jehovah. This is the move toward the promise. So now the first move is resolve the praise. Under that move we got affliction. And then after the affliction which I'm about to get knocked back I will make a promise to God. Repeat after me, Lord. Lord. The best time, the best time to, make to make a promise is when I'm afflicted. Oh, you didn't see it. You didn't see it. Go with me again. Lord, Lord. the best time, the best time according, to this song, according to this song, the best time, the best time to make a promise, make a promise is, when is when I'm in sorrow. Let me prove it to you. This is the move of a promise. I told you etymologically the word promise means where God takes God's word and hurls it in front of your now. What's in front of your now is the next. Somebody have a next. Yes. See, you're succumbing in the now. That's why you never get to your blessing. My deacon has got Thank you very much. The reason why you can't see your way out is because you only see the trouble that you're in. So a promise is when God goes ahead of your problem. A promise is when God goes ahead of your trial and he puts a word in front of you. The reason why you keep walking, keep living, keep striving, because the answer to your now is in your next. That's why you can't give up. That's why you can't surrender. That's why you can't retreat. Because if you go back, you'll never get what's in front of you. And what's in front of you are the promises of God. Preach, Pastor Man. Then I'll call on the name. Somebody call on then. When? Then. When? Then. When? Then. When? Then. When? Then. Oh, I talked to me, Pastor Man. When should I call on the name of the Lord? When I'm in trouble? When should I call on the name of the Lord? When I'm in the valley? When should I call on the name of the Lord? When I'm in the storm? When should I call on the name of the Lord? That's the time to make the promise. What's the promise? What's the promise? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I'll call on the name of Jehovah. Go to uh, Jehovah. Go to part B. Part B. Oh, Jehovah, I beg you, deliver my soul. Now, this is the prayer. So after the promise, I'll call on the name of the Lord. I'm not calling Bobby. I'm not calling Christina. I'm not calling my friend. I'm not calling the bank. I'm not calling the pastor. I'm calling on the name of the Lord. And after I call on the name of the Lord, I've got to get down on my knees and start praying. And the prayer of the effective prayer of the righteous, it availeth much. When you pray in earnest, God will hear your prayer. When you pray sincerely, God will hear your prayer. When you pray the word of God, God will answer your 
shall pray. Amen. Men became a living, breathing soul. Somebody have a soul. soul. This is our ability and responsibility. I can give God the praise in the problem. I can grab gratitude and give God gratitude in the problem because I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God and the Spirit of God makes me a speaking spirit. So God does want us to speak in tongues, but here's one thing that God wants me to say when I'm in the problem, when I am in affliction. God wants me to say, I need you. God wants me to say, you are the only one that can get me out. God wants me to submit to God and I speak that with my mouth and when I speak that with my mouth, that's my promise. Talk to me, Judge Judy. Talk to me, Judge Judy. It's a binding covenant whether you speak it or whether you write it. So if you say, God, I will call. That means when, then, then, when, when I'm in trouble, I'll call on your name. Part B of verse 4. I says, oh Jehovah, I beg you to deliver my soul. My prayer is that you get me out of this. My prayer is that you come in here with me. My prayer is that you deliver my soul. My prayer is that you lift me up. I don't want to stay in the bed of depression. I don't want to stay in the dark room in bed. I don't want to stay in the bed of my affliction. I don't want to stay in the valley of my de de defeat. I don't want to stay down. I want to get back up. And if I pray God, you'll pick me up. If I pray God, you'll pick me up. If I pray God, you'll pick me up. You'll get this in a minute. If I pray God, you'll pick me up. And now it's just about me believing in the word of God that after I make you a promise, I'll call on your name. Then I'll pray, deliver me, come get me. And when you come and get me, I'll stand up on my feet and I'll give you the praise always that no matter where I am, somebody will know it was God that picked me up. It was God that lifted me up. And I'm up because I'm standing up because of the power of God. Yes. That you give God a declaration. I promise I'll call on you and I will pray when I'm in the affliction. And after I pray, I open my eyes at Rena and I start seeing that you're blessing John, you're blessing Jaime, you're blessing Jeremy, you're blessing Jerry, you're blessing everybody around me. And when God blesses with goodness everybody around you, it's a setup because you're next in line. I gotta go, I got to go see my man LeBron take it home today. Listen now, but before I I go. I got to let you know that it's a setup. Somebody holler setup. If I see Kiara getting blessed, if I see Akira getting blessed, if I see my sister getting blessed, if I see my mother getting blessed, it's a setup because I'm next in line. I'm grabbing my gratitude now because if I bless the Lord all the time, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'll praise Him when I'm eating oatmeal. I'll praise Him when I'm eating fruit fry. I'll praise Him when I'm eating a steak. I'll praise Him when I ain't got nothing to eat because God God is my bread. God is my water. I'll give him praise. No matter the problem in my life, I'll give him praise. No matter the knockdowns of my life, I'll give him praise. I'll grab gratitude. Get up and grab your gratitude. Don't lay down in the storm. Don't lay down in the trouble. Don't lay down in the valley. Don't lay down in darkness. Don't be depressed no more. Today is D day. It's your deliverance day. I'm coming out of trial. I'm coming out of trouble. I'm coming out of darkness. I'm coming out of deliverance. I'm delivered, I'm delivered, I'm delivered, I'm delivered, I'm delivered. We want you to know God specializes in things impossible. He loves to move.